In this video we are going to see more comments that help us understand the data structure and the data type in R. First let's create a matrix by from 1 to 100 by 10 by 10 dimensions. This matrix will just serve for us as a reference on using the comments. As we learned matrix is a type of data and if I ask uh, what is the class of this matrix? It tells us that it's a matrix. So what happens if I ask the class of um, an interval of numbers? It tells us that it's an integer. And we kind of expected it to be numeric, right? Because all when you when you create the just a class of a number in R, it is numeric. And then why is integer? Well, it turns out that R uh, has this integer type because uh, is the type most commonly used for numbers without fraction in both C and Fortran. And the operations are way faster when dealing with integer numbers. So sometimes R can be tricky with the data types and that's why I really recommend that you always check the type of the data that you're using because sometimes this can create some problems depending like for instance you're going to use a function that requires you to have a numeric and you pass as an integer sometimes it will not accept the integer and you have to convert them. So but an integer is a type of data that doesn't accept fractions so let's say I ask the class of a sequence of numbers it still tells us that it's an integer because it's the same as as before but if I ask a sequence of numbers with a fraction with a fr uh, interval that is a fraction see that it turns out now to be numeric because as I said the integer can't support the name uh, a uh, number with a fraction. And let's learn new commands on how to understand the structure. There is the command S S T str which tells us the structure of uh, a variable. Here we see that the structure of this matrix is int which is the same as the integer from 1 to 10 in the bo in both dimensions and here we have a small sample of the data. The structure, the str command, it's very useful in understanding data frames and lists because it, like I said, like a data frame can contain another data frame which can contain a list, which can then contain con contains a matrix, and this str command command it explores all the the variable, telling us the whole structure of it. Uh, another useful command is the summary command. It, uh, the summary command, it gives us a summary of every column, and this is really useful because usually the our data will be organized in each column will have the same kind of information. For instance, precipitation or temperature, and so having a summary with the minimum, maximum, medians can be very handy when trying to understand be better understand your data. Then we have the command dim which tells us the dimension of a of a data. Here this matrix is 10 by 10 like we created it and we have also the length the length command which gives us the length. It's important to note that arrays don't have dimensions only have length so if I ask for the dimension of a uh, array from 1 to 10 it gives us no because it only has a length uh, <coughs> I would really advise you to highlight these comments in your reference sheet because I can assure you that you will be using them a lot they're really important on understanding your data uh, next I would like to talk about the NA. NA is used when there is no data for this specific point. And this is very common in meteorological data in which we will study because sensors have problems sometimes. Uh, 
they just lose the data and there is an A, an a then on them. So let's just create a matrix here with, uh, no, a vector here with with some NAs to try to understand better. Five, three, six, and a nine. Okay. So we have the comment in a omit, which will simply not show the NAs. We'll just ignore that they exist. You can see here just the elements without the NA. Um, this here is like the the common DNA returns some additional attributes, and th this this attribute structure is not very used in R, but so I will not go into details because I rarely see th this being used. But just to to you to have an idea to how to use it, if I attribute that to a variable called x, the same thing. So to to use this. Th this attribute here tells us, us which uh, elements were omitted, the element 1 and the element 5. So if I ask the attribute any a action from the variable x, I get the two, two elements that were omitted. But th this is not really important, uh, I rarely see this structure being used in R. So uh, let let me create a matrix here with some some NAs on it. When I use the NA omit in a matrix, the whole line containing any NAs is omitted. So if I use NA omit in this matrix, uh, only the last line will be remaining. No. As we expected, just the last line and the w first and the second lines in this case were omitted and it's important to note also that NA is the symbol for missing data this is just a word NA it's not the same thing I have seen people replacing uh, missing data with with this which is a string is not a NA or so you can test if something is an A by with the comment is an A. Is this an A? No, it's not. And zero is not an A. Sometimes people replace an A with a zero, and this is I really don't recommend to use that because some functions in R give a give a special treatment for the N A, and when you replace it with something else or you don't properly. Uh, assign NA where there is no data you can an end up with wrong results so to be an A needs to be just NA and both in uppercase this is a NA and when you compare something to NA you, d you can't do that that will result in just NA you need to compare you need to I always ask is NA Okay. Okay. So now let's talk about an exercise, a practice for you. Uh, in the description, you can find a, um, a function that I created, which retrieves real weather data from an a API called Kronos. It's from North Carolina University. Um, let me type here the address. So. This is the address of their web page. You can check out. It's a really cool s service which allows us to to retrieve weather data by a web service, and we will be retrieving data from uh, Gainesville, which is the city I'm located right now, and weather data since 1960. And you can take a look in the code and try to understand the function, but we will be we'll, we'll go over it in the future. So for now, just use the function uh, without any parameters because the parameters already have its its attributes already have a default value. So you can just ask for a, let's as assign it to a table get weather. 
okay and now the table has the weather so in the exercise I would like you to to understand better understand this data that we got in the table variable I mean like use the structure commands the str the summary the um, class and understand this variable and also understand which kind of data is each of these columns you can select a single column and then ask what is the class of it and what is the structure of it and you know maybe suggest how to improve this data because the format you see that is not really correct the way it is right now so in the next video we are going to go over this this process uh, see you there then